In this video exercise, we will create a common in-place pharmacophore hypothesis, also known as a consensus pharmacophore, from a collection of pre-aligned factor 10a ligands as found in the phase tutorial. So let's begin. We'll start by importing the ligands, which in this case is the file factor 10a underscore dcph underscore in place. The dcph just stands for develop common pharmacophore hypothesis, and the in place refers to the fact that these ligands are already pre-aligned in place. This example was created from a diverse set of factor 10a protein ligand complexes that were aligned to produce the ligand alignments. If we include the first entry and shift click the last entry, notice that these ligands are indeed pre-aligned. And you can see here from the title, the PDB ID from where each ligand originated. So next, we'll open the Develop Pharmacophore panel by going to Tasks, Browse, Ligand-Based Virtual Screening, and then Develop Pharmacophore Hypothesis. Now, since we have a collection of multiple ligands, we'll leave the Create Pharmacophore Model Using as set to Multiple Ligands Selected Entries, and we'll just ensure that all our ligands are indeed selected in the entry list or project table. Now notice that for each ligand, we can see all of its potential pharmacophore features. So a good idea is to tile the workspace so we can see the individual ligands and their potential features more clearly. So press Command or Control L on the keyboard to tile the workspace. You can also access the workspace tiling through the workspace configuration panel. And so now we can scroll through the ligands and view the potential features. We'll note that by default, all ligands are considered to be active, that is, until we define any to be considered inactive. Now, there are two methods when dealing with multiple ligands. The first method, find best alignment and common features, will essentially generate all possible confirmations for each ligand, generate the features, perform the alignments, and determine which are the common features. Whereas the other method, use pre-aligned ligands consensus model, bypasses the confirmation generation and alignments procedure, so as to retain the confirmation and coordinates of the input structures, which expects pre-aligned ligands. So in this example, we'll use the second method since our ligands are pre-aligned, and note that the generate confirmers has now become inactive. We could click run to use the default hypothesis settings, but let's make a few changes. Here, the features tab shows options relevant to the selection of features in the common pharmacophore. Now, in this example, we're interested in a diversity of potential hypotheses, so we will want to require only a fraction of the active ligands match any given hypothesis. So let's reduce the hypothesis should match at least 15% of our actives. And we will want to allow flexibility in the number of features in any given hypothesis. So let's set the number of features in the hypothesis to range from four to seven. But then we'll set the preferred minimum number of features to five. So in this case, the pharmacophore perception will start by looking for a seven point hypothesis. If it can't find one, it will look for a six point hypothesis. Again, if it can't find any, it'll move down to looking for a five point hypothesis and so on. And then normally when a hypothesis that matches the criteria is found, the algorithm stops searching. But here, when the preferred minimum number of features option is active and set to five in this example, it won't stop searching even if it found a seven or a six point hypothesis, but will continue looking and will only stop after checking for five point hypotheses. For all other feature settings, we'll just use the defaults, but note that you can always click the help button to find out more information about a given setting in the panel. Over in the scoring tab, the default scoring function for ranking hypotheses in common pharmacophore perception is the phase hypo score. The phase hypo score metric is a linear combination of the survival score and the bedrock alpha equals 20 enrichment performance on a small scale virtual screen that is automatically set up and executed by the common pharmacophore perception process. In other words, as part of the scoring procedure, each hypothesis is evaluated in its ability to rank actives against the 1000 compound Glide decoy dataset. This Glide decoy dataset was created by selecting 1000 ligands from a 1 million compound library 
that were chosen to exhibit drug-like properties. Now notice that if you have your own separate decoy dataset, you can define them here. Also, if you take a look at the custom scoring function, you have the option to modify various coefficients of the phase hypo score formula. Now, to speed up the calculation in this example, we'll actually use custom fast scoring. This will avoid the execution of the small scale virtual screen so that the returned hypotheses are only ranked by their survival scores. In the excluded volumes tab, we have the option to create an excluded volume, but in this example, we'll leave it unchecked. We'll click save, rename the job, and click run to start the calculation and then close the panel. This job should only take a few seconds on a single CPU. When the job finishes, we should see a banner notification to view the results as they incorporate into the project table. So here, each hypothesis is shown as a group that contains the hypothesis entry and a subgroup with the aligned active ligand structures. The top ranked hypotheses contain six features, two acceptors, one donor, two hydrophobes, and one ring feature. Note down here, some of the lower ranked hypotheses only have four features. If we double click the inclusion icon, we can fix the hypothesis in place and then open the actives group to superimpose the actives used to create that particular hypothesis and see how they align. Double clicking the blue H hypothesis button is also a quick shortcut for viewing the hypothesis without having to open up the group. A single left or right click on the blue H button also reveals a few more options specific to the given hypothesis, like hiding the tolerance spheres, while left or right clicking the green hypothesis H button reveals options relevant to all the hypotheses, such as determining whether multiple binding modes can be detected from the collection of hypotheses that were generated here. Finally, note that right-clicking on a feature in the workspace also reveals other options for feature editing. We'll discuss more about all of these topics in future videos, so please stay tuned. For now, be sure to check previous videos on creating pharmacophore hypotheses using a receptor ligand complex, while in the next video, we'll cover how to create a common pharmacophore hypothesis using ligands that have not yet been pre-aligned.